We start in Vernazza, where the big news is the hourly arrival of the train, bringing an almost rhythmic surge of visitors into town. There's one main street. It runs from its train station down to the sea. Of the five towns, Vernazza has the closest thing to a natural harbor. The old castle no longer says, stay away. Instead, it seems to welcome people-packed excursion boats, settle into a comfy spot on the breakwater, study the arrangement man and nature have carved out here over the last 15 centuries. Crumpled hills come with topographical lines, a terraced green bouquet of cactus, grapevines, and olive trees blanketing the surrounding hills. Each town is honeycombed with a range of rooms, apartments, and small hotels. Rentable private rooms, called camere, are the best values throughout the Cinque Terre. This gang rented a place with a homey living room and a small but fully equipped kitchen. This couple chose a perch right above the piazza. The adjacent church bells chime through the day, but thanks to an agreeable town priest, they're silent through the night. In Vernazza, the action's at the harbor, where you'll find a kid's beach, plenty of sunning rocks, and a wealth of cafes and restaurants. Like a breakwater keeps out the waves at the bottom of town, a gate stops traffic at the top. No cars enter this village of 600 residents, except early on Tuesdays, when trucks and vans roll in for the weekly tailgate party street market. While most tourists are still in their rooms, villagers, some who've never set foot in a modern mall, do their shopping. The mobile market serves a different town each day. The flower stand is a family affair. For 20 years of Tuesdays, the Lombardo family has set up right here. And the son, Eros, florist by day and opera singer by night, sells flowers with a dramatic flair. People of these towns are proud of their heritage. They brag that while big time Riviera resorts nearby sold out, the Cinque Terre is still locally owned. The families remain tight and they go back centuries. 